right now with more reaction to J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo earnings. David George joins us. He is Baird senior research analyst. And what did you think looking through these numbers? Because even though both of those bank banks beat on both the bottom and the top line, you are looking at uh, both the stocks selling off. Yeah, that's right. Good morning. Uh, fr from our perspective, in terms of the stocks, keep in mind that, that both of these names have had big moves uh, so far in 2024. And, and I think there was an expectation that uh, both companies were going to guide up uh, Becky with respect to net interest income. So um, I think that there was some hopes, particularly out of JP Morgan, that we were going to see a little more upside uh, as it relates to net, to net interest income. And, and unfortunately, we didn't get that. But again, uh, the quarter was fine. Credit quality was good. Markets, businesses were good. They did beat Q, uh, Q1 on both top and bottom line. So I think it's important to have that perspective that the quarter was good. Uh, but at 2.4 times tangible, uh, Becky, from a valuation standpoint, the market simply wanted more. David, is that um, ridiculously high expectations? I mean, we just got the CPI numbers on Wednesday that showed consumer inflation was hotter than expected. You got PPI yesterday that showed producer prices not hotter than expected. If you're going to raise your net interest income, it's going to be on the idea that you are much more convinced that the Fed's not going to raise rates anytime soon. That, that may just be a step too far for any of these banks to jump to that. And by not saying it, maybe they're just being conservative and playing it smart. Yeah, I think that's right. I was just going to say that that I, I do think they're being conservative. Uh, but but again, that the that, uh, hope springs eternal, particularly with uh, uh, forward expectations with the Fed. And as you mentioned, expectations have been incredibly volatile. So I think in both cases uh, that there is some conservatism in place. But this is simply a situation of, of some profit taking after very strong moves in both of these stocks. From our standpoint, both of them are very crowded uh, in the investment community. So uh, a little bit of softness today is is not particularly surprising, given, again, those guys were just a little light, I think, relative to maybe what uh, market participants were hoping for. We haven't heard from Citi just yet. We will be hearing from them later today. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citi, which is your favorite of these three? We're neutral on uh, both J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo. Um, Wells Fargo, we were uh, big bulls on for uh, the last couple of years, and we downgraded it earlier uh, in the first quarter simply on valuation. And J.P. Morgan, we've been uh, neutral on over the near term for the same reason. Our preference, Becky, has really been in that regional bank group, the valuation and risk reward trade-offs. And from our standpoint, at least, is much more attractive. Stocks like Comerica, Truist, Key, Huntington um, look much more attractive on a valuation basis relative to the mega caps, which from our standpoint are much more crowded and, and a lot more expensive. You didn't mention City. Yeah, we don't cover cities, so I can't really okay. give you anything there. Uh, my okay. apologies, but uh, again, that's no, our that's view. No, that's good to know. I, I wasn't sure why it was left out. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't like, oh, they really stink or, oh, they're really great. <laughs> so, uh, David, thank you for clarifying, and thank you for talking through these results so quickly with us. Sure. Thanks. Good morning.